and welcome to Westside Baptist Church in Berea, Kentucky. We're glad you could join us and hope you enjoy the message and songs we have for you today. If you need to reach us, our contact information is listed here and also will appear during the service and again at the end of the service. Thank you for watching today. Our service will begin shortly. moment during our service to honor our mothers on this Mother's Day. In 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1 verse 5, the Apostle Paul turns the mind of the younger Timothy back to the faith that first dwelt in the lives of his mother and grandmother to encourage and challenge Timothy in completing the task that he had already been called by God to accomplish here on earth. We too look into the eyes of our mothers today for that same encouragement and challenge to complete our purpose on earth. We look to the sincere faith of godly mothers that have gone before us into this undiscovered land of heaven. Mothers that spent their lives depositing love, hope, and faith into us, even when they themselves were battered, wandering, and scarred. We thank God for the gift of their influence, care, and the memories that still cradle us today. We also thank the Lord and rejoice in the mothers that are still before us today. We celebrate you honor you and we say that we love you we see you and we say thank you for still pouring these virtues of motherhood into our lives thank you moms for seeing the best in us even when we don't see it in ourselves thank you moms for the unconditional love that you give in the midst of a dark world where love is so unconditional a poem by bj hoff states it very well when he wrote mother her heart is our companion all through our life her faith is our quiet partner in success. Her strength, our constant anchor in the storm. Her love, our greatest joy through the years. As scriptures tell us, you are far more precious than jewels. And Proverbs also reminds us that, the, that charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. With the crisis that we find ourselves in today, we cannot give you what you deserve or worship with you the way that we would like but we desire for you to know how valuable that you all are to God and to us. 
May God bless you all and his face shine upon you, giving you grace and mercy this Mother's Day. Heavenly Father, on this Mother's Day, we thank you for our mothers through who your gift of life begins and who we are nurtured into great human beings. We lift up all mothers to you, to your love and care. We pray for them, for their needs of strength and support to continue to nurture a family of love in your honor. Lord, we call upon your blessed name to bless all mothers today and every day. Extend your hands of grace over them. We acknowledge that it is hard, tiring work, and we ask you to bless them for all their contributions towards family life and its growth. Granted, they may be filled with joy in the ordeal of being a mother and proud in the family you have gifted. Amen. Jesus, draw me ever nearer as I labor through the storm. You have called me to this passage, and I'll follow though I'm this journey bring a blessing may I rise on wings of faith and at the end of my heart's testing with your likeness let me Jesus, guide me through the tempest. Keep my spirit straight and sure. When the midnight meets the morning, let me
Well, again, let me say that it is wonderful to have you with us today. And also let me officially say Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful day in the Lord. We honor you today and we thank you for your love and for your sacrifice in so many areas of life. Well, we're also looking forward to uh, start coming back together again in the sanctuary here. And we're starting to prepare for that. That's going to be our first service is going to be a Wednesday night on the 20th. And uh, that will be at 630. And we'll have devotion and prayer time here in the sanctuary. And then, of course, on the 24th will be our first official Sunday as well. We're going to have two Sunday morning services, one at 9, one at 11. There'll be no Sunday school still for a while except for online. We'll continue that. And uh, we'll be giving you more details this week about that coming up. But we are excited about that. And we hope that not only our uh, friends will come back and family, but also maybe you guests that have been watching and been with us for many weeks and uh, hopefully being blessed by the, uh, the online uh, services, that you also will feel welcome to come back. We have guest spots for you and we'll treat you really well. We preach the Word of God here and we'd love to have you come be with us. Well, today's message is He takes... He heals, and He sends away. He takes, He heals, and He sends away. Our scripture will be from the Gospel of Luke, and chapter 14, and we will read in just a moment, verses 1 through 6. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce Mr. Joseph Merrick, the Elephant Man. Before doing so, I ask you please to prepare yourselves. Brace yourselves up to witness one who is probably the most remarkable human being ever to draw the breath of life. Those words were words of Tom Norman, who spoke them many times while profiting off of the broken and sick body of Joseph Carey Merrick also known as the Elephant Man, who lived in England during the 1800s. You know, society has always had a problem, a, a deep problem within our sinful nature in the use and the abuse and the profiting at times off of the oddities or the weaknesses or the illnesses of men. In today's Scripture, we see that very thing being done. We see the Pharisees, who were the spiritual leaders. They were men that were supposed to be caring for people, for God's people especially, and shepherding them. Instead, they were exploiting a sick man to set a trap for Jesus Christ on the Sabbath. We're also going to see how Jesus responded to the Pharisees and to that sick man as well. Let's begin reading in Luke chapter 14, verses 1 through 6, and see how Jesus takes, how he heals, and how he sends away. One Sabbath, when he went to dine at the house of a ruler of the Pharisees, they were watching him carefully. And behold, there was a man before him who had dropsy. And Jesus responded to the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, is it lawful to heal a man on, or to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent. And then he took him and healed him and sent him away. And he said to them, Which of you, having a son or some or manuscript, say donkey, or an ox that has fallen into a well on the Sabbath day, will not immediately pull him out? And they could not reply to these things. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I ask the Lord that you would use me today as an instrument to proclaim your goodness, your love, and your grace, and your power, Lord Jesus. And I pray, Lord, that I will decrease 
and that you will increase and that your word will go forth and Lord that you will give the grace to receive these words of each listener today and awaken our spirits Lord revive our souls Heavenly Father and we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ Amen Well, the first thing we need to understand about this story is it is a total setup. It is a setup from the get up, so to speak. And that's exactly what this story is. It says, One Sabbath, when he went to dine at the house of a ruler of the Pharisees. Well, first of all, this is strange for Jesus to even be invited to the house of a ruler of the Pharisees. He was probably a ruler of one of the synagogues because they had already been having problems with Jesus doing certain things on the Sabbath that they thought were wrong. Now first let me say, although Jesus was breaking their rules, he was not breaking the commandments set by God in the Old Testament. A lot of these uh, Sabbath practices were add-ons by man, by the religious leaders as time went forth until Jesus came. So Jesus fully kept the commands for the Sabbath that had been brought down and spoken by the Word, and now the Word had become flesh, and He totally fulfilled the will of the Father. But He did, and we know at least seven times He had already healed on the Sabbath, and there were a couple other issues that the, that the Pharisees had with what Jesus and his disciples did on the Sabbath. So first, it is strange that he is invited to eat with the ruler of this Phar the Pharisees on the Sabbath in his house. They were already upset with him, but he went. It says that they were watching him carefully. They, this was a setup again. So they invited him, and he came, and he knew it was a setup. But he came anyway, and they set a sick man before him. The Scriptures tell us that it's a man with dropsy, and dropsy is a painful disease where the tissues fill with water because of kidney, heart, or liver ailments. And they set this man right in front of Jesus as a trap, knowing that Jesus would heal him, and they would catch him in going against their man-made traditions and rules of the Sabbath. And Jesus responded to them, it says. He responded to the lawyers by asking this question, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? They remained silent. And then it says that he healed that man and he sent him away. And then he looked and responded again to those who had tried to set up the trap to catch him in. And he said, which of you having, per se, a donkey or an ox that has fallen into a well on the Sabbath will not immediately pull him out? And he shamed them. The trap is set to catch Jesus. They used or exploited this sick man to catch Jesus in this trap, but Christ used their own trap against them, and he shamed them. So what did Jesus do? Well, first he went, and I'm thankful that Jesus goes places where we will not go. He knew from the beginning that he was not going to be a welcome guest in this house, but he went. He knew that it was a trap, but he went. He knew there were people there that needed to be touched and loved and shown the love of God, and he went. There are many places that we will not go, but Jesus Christ will go, even into the midst of his enemies. Even when we are surrounded by our enemies, Jesus Christ comes to us. And thank God not only in this story, but in all the stories that Jesus went. We rejoice that Jesus came to us. He left the glories of heaven and put on our flesh and bones, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We rejoice that Jesus went. 
but we're also told that Jesus responded. Jesus responded to them. He saw that what they had done, he saw the uh, abuse and how the Pharisees were using this sick man for their own selfish gain of trying to catch Jesus. You know, I've read this story, I don't know, couldn't tell you how many times in my life, but for some reason this past week, it really, it really affected me of what they had done to this man because the Pharisees and the lawyers on the Sabbath day would not normally, from all that we know, not normally, not saying it never happened, but normally, and what Jesus taught us about their uh, self-righteous behavior, not wanting to have the unclean around them, they would not normally have invited a man like this, especially to the house of a ruler of the Pharisees. So how despicable, how horrible that they would find this sick man at his home or in the streets and say, we want you to come, and we want you to come and have a meal with us on the Sabbath. Can you only imagine if you were put in that situation, thinking maybe that someone had invited you because maybe they loved you or they liked you or they wanted to minister unto you, but when you get there, you realize you were exploited for selfish gain. And Jesus responded to them with the question, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? And I'm thankful that Jesus not only went, but that he also responded. He also responds to us when others are used and abused. And I want you to know today in the world that we live in, we see abuse and we see people exploited and we see people used for selfish and wicked gain. But I want you to know that Jesus is going to respond to that one glorious day. He is not turning a blind eye or a deaf ear. In his time and his way, he will bring perfect justice to all wicked and evil men and women that exploit and use the poor and the sick and the helpless and the lost. Those who needed a shepherd but instead were tricked and abused. Jesus responded. And I'm thankful for that. He not only went, but he responded. And he also, we see that he healed after he asked the question. He said, then he took him. And I love that he took him. He saw the trap. He saw the disgrace of this whole uh, fake setup. They had set the man right before him. And Jesus looking at this sick man in pain maybe not far from death, and he took him. And then it says that he healed him. doesn't say how, if he touched him, or, but he healed him. And so Jesus took him in the midst of his enemies, and he healed him in the midst of his enemies. But it also says that he did something, away, uh, something else. He sent him away. And I love that. He not only took him, he healed him, but he sent him away. Why? To get him out of this toxic environment. He had already by this time probably been ashamed that he was there, understanding that he had been exploited and used to catch Jesus Christ, that they really did not care for him. They were, really were not concerned about his illness nor his spiritual state. And so Jesus looks at him. He responds to the lawyers. And then he takes this man and he heals him. And then he's like Jesus says, you need to get out of here. You need to get out of here. As if to say, these people don't love you, they don't care for you, you're not going to sit here any longer. And he sends him away, healed. And then, of course, he asks that question, which of you? And we'll stick with the animals 
having a donkey or an ox that has fallen into a well on a Sabbath, you'll immediately work on the Sabbath to get that animal out of the well. You'll immediately do it. You'll care for your ox, but you would not care for this child of God. Instead, you used him. You exploited him. You abused him for nothing more than to set a trap for me. You hypocrites, how, how could you do that? How could you care more for an animal than for a human being, a child, a man made in the image of Almighty God and yet affected with the curse, with illness? How could you care more for your ox than for a human being? And especially a man from the household of God, Israel. How could you do that? And I thought this week, how do we see people? How do we see people that are before us? Each day, each week, each month, each year of our lives, there are people in our surroundings that are, if you will, set before us. Now, how do we look at them? Do we see them as human beings created in the image of God like we have been? Do we see them as also cursed with the fallen image of Adam like us, needing help in many ways? And sadly to say, my brother and my sister and my friend, some people are more concerned with their donkey and their ox than with broken people. We see that even in our world today. We will discard even the most pure and innocent of babies into piles of trash, use what we can for our experiments, but we will jail someone if they might steal an eagle's egg. I'm not saying that one is right and one is wrong. I certainly believe we ought to care for our, the world of nature around us that God has blessed us with and we see as nature, but I am saying this, if we care more for animals than for human beings created in the image of God, we're not looking at people like God looks at us. We're not looking at people like Jesus Christ looked at people and still does today. Do you see who is before you? First, let me tell you, for many of you, there's your family before you. Your family is before you. It would be wrong for me to go all the way around the world if I was uh, afforded the opportunity to preach the gospel, but to ignore and despise and not take care of my family first. Our family is before us. Your husband, your wife, your children, and others that are before you. How do you see them? How do you look at them? How do you care for them? There are friends before us that need the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are co-workers before us each day that need the love of God. We even have enemies that are before us that need to be forgiven as God has forgiven us. And we also need to make sure that we do not use people or exploit people or abuse people just to get what we want. How sad. How sickening. And then I also think, haven't we all been used? Haven't we all in some way been exploited for profit? And at times, even in different ways on a daily basis? Used by the politician? Used for statistics to fuel someone's personal interest or company gain? Used by the news and the media as they show to us what they want us to see? 
to steer our mind in a way to believe in a certain thing when that might not really be the case? Are we not exploited and used each day for their gain? It's an amazing, once you drop a thought in someone's mind or into a group of people's minds, how that can totally affect another's life. You can't take that thought back once you've spoken words and insinuated and dropped that into a human being's mind. Sometimes we're used by employers until we can't give them maybe everything we used to or what we want to, and, and then it's goodbye. People we thought were our friends that we opened up our heart to, that we told things to them in trust and in privacy, and it was used against us. What about used and abused by people that were supposed to protect us, those that God had given us that we trusted, and we thought, this is mom and dad, or this is grandpa and grandma, and yet they abused us, those who were supposed to cherish us and love us. What about used by the church? Used by pastors. Those that claim to be Christians, exploited, abused, and used, and that's happening even now as we preached last week about the false prophets, how they're destroying lives of faith, and this prosperity gospel that's upon our lands. They're using and exploiting people while they live in wealth and luxury. And aren't we even abused by ourselves? It truly is a fact that we are our own worst enemy. That we also abuse ourselves. Are we, do we not see that we too are like the sick man put before Jesus in this story? Are we too not sick and in need of a Savior? Are we not mentally and emotionally ill in seasons and times of our life and need the peace of heaven in our mind? Are we not at times physically ill and we need the strength and the healing of Jesus Christ? Are we not spiritually ill, lost, spiritually lost in sin and in wrongdoing of our lives? Yes, we too are in need of a Savior. And that's why Jesus came he came to us to serve us, to save us, and to set us apart from the systems of the world that have used us. This is the gospel. This is the good news of Jesus Christ, that Jesus did go. Even in the midst of those who would reject Him, He came to us. He went among His enemies, and He responds to the world. He spoke life, and He's still speaking today through His Holy Word. He sees those who are before Him, and He heals us in our greatest needs, in our lost estate. He loved us. He took our sins to the cross, and there became the sacrifice that would please God that man could be restored in their relationship with their Creator, that man could be saved. He conquered death, and because he lives, he said, you too shall live. He gives us hope that he's coming back again one day and will fully respond to all the wickedness and evil of the world, to all of his enemies, Jesus 
will respond. Yes, in this story we see where he went, where he responded, where he healed, and where he silenced those that were opposed to him, to those that used the ill man. And he will do that again. He is coming again. He will fully respond. He will totally heal his people physically and mentally and spiritually. And he will silence the enemies of God and Babylon itself. And so the scripture that we read today, it's a scene, it's a picture of what God is going to fully do for his people of faith one day. You see, that man in this story, eventually, he got sick again, he got old, and he died again. However, this story points us to the blessed hope that is found in Jesus Christ and in Christ alone. That what he did in his death, what he did on the cross, what he did in his burial and his resurrection, and what he has promised to do when he comes again and he makes all things right, it's a picture of what is fully to come. That now we can be cleansed and saved from our sins and sealed with the Holy Spirit once we allow Jesus to take us in and to heal us and to separate us from the world. But one day, fully, He will do this when He comes again and He'll gather His church unto Himself and He will raise the bodies of His people to a great meeting in the air. And he's going to speak justice and judgment upon this world. He's going to respond to evil, to wickedness, to sin, to Satan, to the Antichrist, to the dragon. And he will silence those that have opposed him and his people through the centuries. He will make all things new for us and all things right. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And so no matter how we've been used, how we've been exploited for another's gains, how we've been abused by others and ourselves, we see that Jesus comes even today, even in the midst of His enemies, and He seeks us out. And He seeks us out even in our lost and hopeless state. And if you will, he puts us right in front of himself. And he takes us to himself, even in the front, even in front of our enemies. Jesus comes in and he takes us and he heals us spiritually by saving our souls from eternal damnation, saving us from Satan, the world, and even ourselves. And he comes to take us to himself even today. That's what he wants to do to you. You and all people. He wants to take us into himself and begin preparing our lives for heaven. But I love this last one too. The last part again, and I hate to bring that out, but in the story, it said, after he took him and healed him, he sent him away. Get out of this toxic environment. Don't allow these people to abuse you and exploit you and use you. And you know fully that's what he's going to do one day. He sends us away from sin, our sin even. And he calls us to walk in the light as he is in the light. He's wanting to bring you out of the drug house, of wherever you're at. He wants to take you and heal you and remove you from the abuse, from the sickness, from the shame, from the temptation 
from those that would exploit you. But one day, he's going to fully do that. When he returns, he's going to separate us from sin and Satan and this whole world filled with darkness forever. He's going to remove us totally from this toxic environment. He's going to remove us from our sin. He's going to remove us from those that use and abuse, who profit off of us, who exploit us for their gain. I love that, don't you? If you will, just to use the words of the verse, he's going to send us away from all of that. And one day we will be totally separated from all sin and all sorrow, all sickness, and we will be in heaven. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. What a hope, what a promise that is delivered to us by the Holy Spirit through the Word of God of what Jesus Christ does for His own. And you know, he's still coming to us today. He's come to you today where you're at, where you're watching, where you're listening. He's still healing people. He is still coming again. He's still changing lives today. He's still sending us out of a lifestyle of hell and damnation to walk in the light with Him. He's still separating us from our sin. He's still removing us from the toxic environments that we have found ourselves in. He's come to us today, to you today. And I tell you, He wants to take you. And He wants to heal you of your sin-sick soul. And He wants to separate you from the cares and the worries and the problems and the hopelessness of this life. The question is, would you today Look to the one with faith that is looking at you. You're set right in front of him today. Would you let him take you? Would you let him heal you of sin? Would you let him send you away? Believing that, would you do that? Believing that He is the one and true Savior of man? Would you receive the offer that still stands today to come unto me? All of you who are weary, have the weight of the world and guilt and shame upon your life, would you let him take you unto himself? Would you come to his saving, amazing grace with faith and let him heal your soul today? Let him heal your soul first and then he will complete that work one day in your mind and in your body when he returns. Would you today let him separate you from what's using you, what's abusing you, the toxic environment that you're in that is hurting you so deeply? Would you trust Jesus today and accept his offer and take his hand and let him draw you into yourself? Would you let him? Beloved, will you follow him to heaven? 
Will you take him as your Savior? Would you take him as your healer? Would you take him as your Redeemer? Would you take him as your Lord? Would you take him as your Prince of Peace today? And could your story also be one day Jesus came to where I was at and he took me and he healed me and he sent me away from the sorrow and shame of this world. Would you do that right now? I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And if you would receive Jesus, I just encourage you today, right where you're at, to pray this prayer and repeat it after me. Dear Jesus, I need you. I need you to take me into yourself. I need you to heal my sin-sick soul. I need you to save me. I need you to come into my heart. I need you to be my Lord. And I want to follow you as you lead me out of the mud of this world and the muck and the mire and plant my feet upon the rock. Cleanse me, Lord Jesus. Remove me, Lord, from the environments that hurt me. I trust you with my life, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Beloved, if you prayed that prayer and genuinely meant it, we want to hear from you. There are ways that's going to be at the bottom of the screen for you to reach out and to connect with us through our phone number. You can also text that number, 859-986-3444. There are other links. And if you'll just let us know that you prayed that prayer today and we're saved, we'd love to pray for you. We'd love to pray with you. If you'd like, we'd love to send you some material for your walk with Jesus Christ. Maybe there's been a long-time Christian listening today, and you're a Christian, and you know that. You're saved, but you have crept back into bad environments that are hurting you deeply and have stolen your joy and your witness, your testimony, and your love for Jesus. Today, would you too repent and Turn back to Jesus? Would you come back to Him? Would you make that commitment? Would you confess that before the Lord? He is faithful and just and loving to do that. He will forgive you. He'll pick you up and dust you off and grab you by the hand and start walking upon that narrow path again. We'd also love to hear from you. We'd also love to pray for you, pray with you, and maybe be of any assistance in rededicating your life. Maybe there are other spiritual needs that you have, or you just have someone that you need us to pray for that needs the touch of God. There are ways that you can send us that information. Don't walk through this alone. Because what Jesus does will take you out of some environments, but he's going to put you in some environments where you need spiritual, scriptural, Christian help and support. And Jesus wants to do that for you today. So I encourage you today to reach out to us. Let me pray one more time. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that you are still changing lives today. I trust, Lord, that you have done that or the seeds have been sown and you will send others to water and that you will cause the growth 
and people that have heard this message today. Hold us fast, Jesus. Hold us fast. Through this life, through this pilgrimage, through this storm, Lord, hold us fast until you come again and make all things new. We give our lives to you today, Lord Jesus, to serve you, to love you, to worship you, to witness, to work for you, to care for other human beings like you've cared for us. Help us, Lord, to do that. And thank you for this time you've given us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for watching today. We hope you enjoyed our service and invite you to watch again next week.